Uh, first of all, uh, I will start by presenting myself. Uh, so, uh, my name is uh, Dr. Uh, Hazard, and I will be responsible of uh, teaching um, the course of uh, the medical English. Uh, nice to know you all, and I hope uh, that it will be uh, useful and uh, very helpful in your uh, professional career. So uh, the fluency in English is useful and an important skill, not in knowledge, but also in increasing the job opportunities across uh, the world. This uh, course is dedicated to teach uh, healthcare professionals how to use English in medical settings. The model will contain uh, systemic anatomy and communication in healthcare, human body, equipment, and acronyms, digestive cardiovascular blood and humanity systems, respiratory musculoskeletal and central nervous system, communication techniques for the healthcare professionals, and uh, last of all, the ability mm -hmm. of written. So, so our learning, we will explain how to read, how to write, and how to pronounce uh, the common medical terms, how to converse uh, fluently in English, and uh, build a rapport with uh, patients and also colleagues. So, the description of the course. Uh, this course enhances your comprehension of English and enhances your communication abilities of healthcare practitioners. Our lessons uh, provide an overview of the commonly used medical and specialized vocabulary used by English speaking healthcare professionals. So the course will start with uh, an introduction uh, to the human body, uh, where uh, we elaborate in English automedical and anatomical terms with uh, the help and aid of a visual patients. We will move in uh, on to examine we uh, yeah, uh, we we uh, c'est justement une introduction avant de commencer la présentation. Ah. Et maintenant, uh, so uh, we will start with an introduction to the human body, where we elaborate uh, an English anatomical terms with the aid of uh, visual illustrations. And we will move on uh, to examine the component of the skull, the eyes, and the ear. Then delve into the vertebral column and thoracic cage or the rib cage, employing the relevant English vocabulary. Furthermore, uh, the course uh, will discuss the English terms used to describe uh, scientific instruments. Uh, utilized by healthcare professionals. Additionally, uh, the course uh, provides a comprehensive list of medical terms commonly used in uh, laboratory tests 
and uh, diagnostic uh, procedures. So uh, we also teach how to describe organ systems, like uh, digestive. Uh, oui, justement, c'est un, c'est une introduction uh, de la totalité de la formation uh, de, de la médecine en anglais uh, avant d'entamer uh, le module d'aujourd'hui. Euh, C'est une petite description euh, de la formation médicale qu'on va enchaîner. Euh, donc, euh, justement, on va commencer par euh, euh, l'anatomie euh, du, du, euh, du système euh, squelettique et du système osseux. Euh, donc, euh, C'est euh, la première partie. Which called the human body uh, vocabulary with pictures. Et avant, avant, avant la présentation, j'aimerais euh, justement euh, vous donner une description de, de la totalité de la formation. Euh, donc, la formation est euh, composée euh, par six parties. Donc, l'anatomie du corps, euh, puis on verra les, 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 les équipements. Euh, après, euh, on va parler euh, de chaque système, donc le système digestif, cardiovasculaire, le système sanguin, le système immunitaire, le système respiratoire, musculosquelettique et le système nerveux central. Euh, après, euh, on va euh, parler sur la communication, euh, donc euh, les techniques de la communication. Et euh, à la fin, on verra euh, comment rédiger et écrire une observation médicale en anglais. Euh, C'est tout. So, uh, the final segment of the course is dedicated to the crucial communication skills required to communicate professionally with clients and also with colleagues. By enrolling in this course, you will gain uh, expertise in the English terminology used by healthcare uh, practitioners in medical field and also in medical setting, which will open up new avenues for your career development. So uh, you will enhance uh, your ability to comprehend and to understand patients in emergency uh, situations and uh, where effective uh, communication can be crucial in uh, saving lives. So, uh, we will start by uh, the human body vocabulary with pictures. And uh, the key points from this model are learning human body vocabulary with picture. Uh, the skull is a bony structure that forms the head in uh, vertebrates. Uh, 14 bones compose the face. The accessory structures of the eye are the eye muscles, highlights, conjunctiva, and lacrimal, lacrimal apparatus. The ear is divided into three major areas, external, middle, and inner ear. Uh, the vertebral column extends from the skull to the pelvis which transmits the body weight to the lower limbs and uh, 30 separated bones uh, from uh, the skeletal framework of its upper limbs. So the first part, we will start by the introduction. The English for healthcare refers to the specialized vocabulary used by healthcare professionals and clinical researchers. Medical English is not kind of English we learn at school. It has its own language, structure, and conventions. Medical English is part technical, part academic, and part everyday. In this module, we will learn vocabulary for different body parts with pictures. So uh, the topics to be covered, the skull, 
ce qu'on appelle en français le crâne, the eye and ear, l'œil et l'oreille, the vertebral column and thoracic cage, la colonne vertébrale et la cage thoracique, the pectoral girdle and upper lung, and the pelvic girdle and the lower lung. So, uh, la partie pectorale et uh, le membre supérieur, ainsi le, le pelvis et le membre inférieur. So, the skull, le crâne, Uh, the skull is a bony structure that forms the head and vertebrates. It supports uh, the structures of the face and provides a protective cavity for the brain. Two sets of bones uh, form the skull, a uh, cranium, uh, and the, the facial bones. So, uh, le crâne uh, donc, uh, est composé par euh, la boîte crânienne et les os de la face. Donc, euh, pour euh, la boîte crânienne, the cranium, so the cranium encloses and protects the fragile brain tissue and is composed of eight large flat bones. There are eight components of cranium, So we have the frontal bone, two parietal bones, uh, two temporal bones, occipital, sphenoid, and ethmoid. Uh, so uh, for the skull, it is divided into parts. So we have the cranial bones and the, the, the facial bones. So uh, the cranial bones uh, is, uh, is composed by uh, the frontal bone, uh, ou bien l'os frontal en français, parietal bone, l'os uh, parietal, occipital bone, l'os occipital, temporal bone, l'os temporal, ethmoid bone, l'ethmoid, sphenoid bone, le sphenoid. So the frontal bone, the first, the frontal bone forms the forehead. Uh, forehead uh, means uh, le front. The bony projections under the eyebrows uh, and the superior part of each eyes orbit. Uh, eyebrows, uh, ce sont les sourcils et uh, eyes uh, orbits, ça veut dire les orbites. Parietal bones, the paired parietal bones form most of the superior and lateral walls of the cranium. They meet in the midline of the skull at the sagittal suture and form the, coron the coronal suture where they meet the, the frontal bone. Temporal bones, the temporal bones lie inferior to the parietal bones. They join them at the squamous sutures. Occipital bone, the occipital bone joins the parietal bones anteriorly at the lambuid suture. In the base of the occipital bone is a large opening, the foramen magnum, which surrounds the lower part of the brain, allows the spinal cord to connect with the brain. Uh, so uh, the foramen magnum, ça veut dire le foramen magnum, et the spinal cord, ça veut dire la moelle épinière. Sphenoid bone, the butterfly shaped sphenoid bone spin the width of the skull and forms the part of the floor of the cranial cavity. In the midline of the sphenoidal uh, is a small depression, the cilatrosica or torx saddle, which forms snug enclosure for the pituitary gland. Cilatrosica, uh, c'est c'est la cellule turcique et pour euh, pituitary gland, c'est euh, la glande pituitaire. Ethmoid bone, the ethmoid bone is very irregularly shaped and lies anterior to the sphenoid. It forms the roof of the nasal cavity and part of the medial walls of the orbits. Facial bones, 14, 14 bones compose the face, 12 are paired, Only the mandible and vomer are single. 
So we have the maxillae, palatine bones, zygomatic bones, lacrimal bones, nasal bones, vomer bone, anterior nasal conchae et mandible. Donc, euh, pour euh, le nasal conché, ce, ce sont les cornets nasales. Euh, voilà, euh, donc, euh, ce sont les, les os de la face et euh, de la boîte crânienne. So we will move to the eye. Uh, we can explain the eye anatomy in two parts. External and accessory structures of eyeball and internal structures. So, uh, pour l'œil, uh, donc, il est composé entre uh, ce qui est à l'extérieur et ce qui est à l'intérieur. Donc, des structures internes et des structures qui sont externes plus les accessoires. External and accessory structures of eyeball. The accessory structures of the eye include the extrinsic eye muscles, eyelids, conjunctiva, and lacrimal apparatus. Euh, euh, pour euh, les accessoires, euh, donc euh, les structures euh, qui sont accessoires pour l'œil, euh, donc euh, on a les muscles de l'œil, les muscles extrinsèques de l'œil, les paupières, eyelids, ce sont les paupières, conjonctiva, c'est la conjonctive, and lacrimal apparatus, c'est l'appareil lacrymal. Eyelids, euh, ce sont les paupières. Eyelashes, ce sont les cils. Conjonctiva, c'est euh, la conjonctive. Lacrimal apparatus, l'appareil lacrymal. Lacrimal glands, c'est la glande lacrymale. Lacrimal canaliculi, ce sont les canalicules euh, lacrymales. L'isozème, donc l'isozème, euh, c'est la composante euh, protéique des larmes. Et extrinsic eye muscles. Ce sont les euh, muscles de, euh, de l'œil euh, extrinsèques. Euh, external uh, structure of uh, the eye and also the accessories. Internal structures the eyeball. So now that we have covered the general anatomy of the eyeball, we are ready to get specific. Uh, we have the fibrous layer. Donc, uh, fibrous layer is, uh, ça veut dire uh, la couche fibreuse. Layer, uh, uh, here la couche. Fibrous, fibrous, vascular, vasculaire. Uh, fibrous layer, the outermost layer consists of the protective sclera and uh, the transparent cornea. Donc, uh, sclera, uh, c'est la, uh, la sclérotique, voilà, et le cornea, c'est la cornea. Sclérotique, c'est la sclera. Glistening white connective tissue is seen anteriorly as the white of the eye, and the cornea is the central anterior portion of the fibrous layer. Crystal clear light enters the eye through this part. Uh, so uh, this is the sclera, la partie blanche uh, de l'œil, et uh, la cornea, la cornea. A vascular layer, ça veut dire la couche uh, vasculaire, uh, the middle eyeball of the layer, it has three distinguishable regions, choroid, cellular body, and the iris. The choroid, the core ciliaire, and the iris. Choroid is the most posterior blood-rich nutritive tunic that contains a dark pigment which prevents light from scattering inside the eye. 
Sit your body to smooth muscles, structures, iris is a thin annular structure responsible for controlling the diameter and uh, the size of the pupil and thus the amount of light reaching the retina defines eye color. Uh, the corps ciliaire or uh, the ciliary body, uh, the iris, uh, the iris, and this is the core width. Pupil rounded opening of pigmented iris through which light passes, la pupille. Retina, a thin layer of tissue that lines the back of the eye on the inside located near to the optic nerve. The purpose is to receive light that the lenses has focused, convert the light into a neural signal and send these signals on the, onto the brain for visual Propagation. Uh, retina, c'est la retine. Lens, c'est le cristallin. A transparent biconvex structure along with the cornea helps uh, to refract the light to be focused on the retina. Voilà, lens, c'est le cristallin. Pupil, uh, la pupille. Et uh, ici, uh, so we have the retina. Yeah. La retina en français. En général, c'est la composante de l'œil, or the DI, both external and internal structures. The ear. Anatomically, the ear is divided into three major areas. Donc, comme on sait bien que euh, l'oreille est divisée en trois parties. External outer ear, l'oreille externe. Middle ear or tympanic cavity, euh, l'oreille moyenne ou la cavité tympanique. Internal inner ear, l'oreille interne. External outer ear, l'oreille externe. The external ear is composed of three parts. Pina, ça veut dire le pavillon. The shell shaped structure surrounding the auditory canal opening. External acoustic miatus, c'est le canal auditif externe. A short neural chamber carved into the temporal bone of the skull. And the tympanic membrane, c'est la membrane tympanique, donc the sound waves entering the auditory canal eventually hit the tympanic membrane or eardrum, so and cause it to vibrate. The canal ends at the eardrum, and which separates uh, the external from the middle ear. Uh, Voilà, c'est euh, les, les différentes parties euh, du pavillon. Et euh, la deuxième illustration, c'est euh, la membrane tympanique. Middle air or tympanic cavity. The middle ear or tympanic cavity is a small air filled mucosal lined cavity within the temporal bone. It has three parts opening, parangotympanic tube, ossicles. The opening is uh, the tympanic cavity, is flanked uh, literally by the 
air dam and middle by a bony wall with two openings, the oval window and round window. Uh, the oval window, c'est la fenêtre ovale et the round window, uh, c'est uh, la fenêtre ronde. Uh, uh, Farango uh, tampanic tube, uh, c'est uh, la coupe d'ostache et uh, it runs obliquely down the road to link the middle ear cavity with the throat and uh, the mucosa lining. Ossipel, ce sont les osselets. Uh, so it consists three small bones, malleus, ancus, et, and stapes. Le marteau, l'enclume et l'étrier. Malleus, ancus, stapes. Internal inner ear, l'oreille interne. The internal ear is a maze of bony chambers located deep within the temporal bone behind the eye socket. It has three parts, cochlea, vestibule, semicircular canals. Uh, uh, l'oreille interne est composée par uh, la cochlea, uh, vestibule et les canaux semi-circulaires. The semicircular can canals, the cochlea, and the vestibule. Uh, this part is the nerve, uh, the vestibule, uh, the vestibular nerve, and the cochlear nerve. Uh, so here is uh, the, um, the vestibule. The vestibule uh, here. We have the semicircular canals, and last part is uh, the cochlea. So the ear is an organ of hearing and balance. Uh, L'oreille, c'est un organe de l'ouïe et uh, de l'audition et uh, de l'équilibration. The vertebral column and thoracic cage, la colonne vertébrale et la cage thoracique. The vertebral co column or uh, spine. The vertebral column extends from the skull, which it supports, to the pelvis, where it transmits the weight of the body to the lower limbs. Hence, it serves as the axial support of the body. So the spine is formed from 26 irregular bones connected and reinforced by ligaments that results in a flexibility and curvy structure. Components of spine. Spinal cord, à veut dire la moelle épinière, surrounded and protected by the vertebral column and runs through its central cavity. Vertebrae, ce sont les vertèbres. Spine consists of 33 separate bones called vertebrae. There are five types of vertebrae. Cerebral vertebrae, thoracic vertebrae, lumbar vertebrae, sacrum, coccyx. So, uh, les vertèbres cervicales, cervical vertebrae, the seven cer uh, cervical uh, vertebrae from the neck region of, of spine. Thoracic uh, vertebrae, the 12 thoracic vertebrae are all typical. Uh, lumbar vertebrae, the five lumbar vertebrae have a massive block-like bodies. And the sacrum is the, the, the fusion of the five vertebrae from the... Uh, the, uh, the fusion of five vertebrae uh, forms the sacrum, and the coccyx is formed from the fusion of the three to five tiny irregular shaped vertebrae. Cervical spine. Uh, we have seven cervical spine. 
and 12 thoracic spine, 5 lumbar spine, sacrum, and coccyx. Intervertebral discus, uh, là, les discs qui sont intervertébraux. The individual vertebrae are separated by pods of flexible fibrocartilage intervertebral discus that caution the vertebrae and absorb shock while allowing the spine flexibility. Uh, les, le, les discs intervertébraux, uh, the inter intervertebral disc uh, between uh, vertebr two vertebral bodies. So, Uh, this is the complement of uh, the vertebrae is composed by the centrum, uh, vertebral arch, vertebral foramen, transverse processes, spinous process, superior and inferior articular process. Uh, centrum, uh, c'est le centre. Uh, it's the weight-bearing part of the vertebra facing anteriorly in the vertebral column. Vertebral arc, uh, c'est l'arc uh, vertebral, is formed from the joining of all posterior extensions, the laminae and pedicles from the vertebral body. So, uh, uh, c'est l'arc, l'arc vertébral or the vertebral arc uh, is composed with uh, the laminae and also uh, the vertical. Uh, voilà. The vertebral foramen, uh, the, the, the canal through which the spinal cord passes, uh, transverse processes. Ce sont les processus uh, transversaux. Uh, two lateral projections from the vertebral arc. Spinous processes. C'est l'apophyse épineuse. Single projection arising from the posterior aspect of uh, the vertebral arc. And uh, the last one is the superior and inferior articular processes. Ce sont les processus articulaires, inférieurs et supérieurs. Paired projections lateral to the vertebral foramen, allowing a vertebra to form a joint with adjacent vertebrae. Uh, the transverse process, articular process, spinous process, laminae, pedicle, the body, the foramen, the superior articular process, the inferior articular process, the spinous process, and the body. Thoracic cage. The thoracic cage is routinely called the bony thorax. Uh, it has three parts. Uh, so we have the sternum, ribs, and the thoracic vertebrae. Uh, sternum, c'est le sternum. The ribs, uh, ce sont les côtes. Et uh, la colonne uh, vertébrale. Bien, uh, thoracic vertebrae. Well, so uh, the sternum, bien le sternum, uh, it's a brace bone, is a typical flat bone, and the result of the, fa uh, the fusion of three bones, the manibrium body and xiphoid process. Landmarks, uh, 
landmark, ça veut dire les, les points de repère. The sternum has three important bony landmarks, the jugular notch, the sternal angle, and the diphysternal joint. The jugular notch, ou bien l'incissure jugulaire, the jugular notch concave upper border of the manubrium can be palpated easily. Generally, it's at the level of the third thoracic vertebra. Euh, voilà, c'est euh, jugular notch. Mm, uh, manubrium of the sternum. The sternal angle. The body of the sternum and uh, the xiphoid process. The sternal angle, the sternal angle results where the manubrium and the body meet as a slight angle to each other, so that a transverse ridge is formed at the level of second ribs. Xiphysternal joint is uh, the xiphysternal joint, the point where uh, the sternal body and the xiphoid process fuse and lies at the level of the, uh, the ninth uh, thoracic vertebra. Ribs. Ce sont les coups. Uh, 12 pairs of ribs uh, form the walls of the bony tracts. So we have the true ribs, les, les vrais coups the false ribs, uh, les faux côtes, uh, and the floating ribs, ce sont les côtes flottantes. Uh, true ribs, the true ribs, the first seven pairs attached directly to the sternum by costal cartilage. False ribs, uh, the next five pairs either attached and, and directly to the sternum or are not attached to the sternum at all. Uh, the floating ribs, the last two pairs of both uh, ribs lack the sternal attachments, so uh, they are called uh, the floating ribs. So we have three uh, types of ribs, the true ribs, the false ribs, and uh, the floating ribs. The pectoral girdle and the upper lamp. So, uh, the pectoral girdle uh, is also known as shoulder girdle. It consists of two bones, a clavicle and scapula, a clavicule and uh, l'homoplate. Clavicle and scapula. Clavicle also known as a collar bone, slender, doubly covered bone, attaches to the manubrium of the sternum medially and to the scapula literally. Uh, it helps to form the shoulder joint to hold the arm away from the top of the thorax and prevent shoulder dislocation. Scapula, also known as a shoulder blood, uh, shaped triangular and commonly called wings uh, because they flare when we move our arms posteriorly. So uh, this is uh, the, the scapula and the clavicle. Uh, each scapula has a flanked body and two important processes. Acromion and uh, coracoid. Macromion et coracoid. Uh, the acromion is the enlarged end of the spine of the scapula and connects uh, with the clavicle uh, literally at the acromioclavicle joint. Uh, coracoid, uh, the big like coracoid process, points over the top of the shoulder and anchors some of the muscles of the arm just medial to the coracoid process is the large uh, suprascapular notch, which serves as a nerve uh, passageway. The upper lamp, ou bien le membre supérieur, uh, 30 uh, uh, separate uh, bones form uh, the skeletal framework of each upper lamp. It has three parts, arm, 
forearm and the hand. Euh, le bras, l'avant-bras et la main. Arm formed by a single bone, the humerus, uh, which is a typical long bone. A long bone extending from the shoulder to the elbow. Uh, the elbow, uh, c'est le coude. For arm, c'est l'avant-bras. Two bones form the skeleton of the forearm, uh, the radius and pleurma. Le radius et le cubitus. Euh, voilà, c'est euh, le membre supérieur, the upper limb. the arm, forearm, and the hand. Radius in the anatomical position of the body is the lateral bone situated in the thumb side of the forearm, crosses over and ends up medial to the ulna. The ulna is the medial bone on the little finger side of the forearm and the forearm. Sorry. Hand. The skeleton of the hand consists of carpals, the metacarpals, and the phalanges. Uh, donc, uh, le, le, la main consiste les carpes, les carpes et les phalanges. Uh, the carpal bone is eight carpal bones around it into irregular rows of four bones, each form uh, the part of the hand called carpus, or more commonly, the wrist. The wrist, ça veut dire le poignet. Uh, metacarpals, the metacarpals are numbered one, two, five, from the thumb, thumb, c'est le pouce, side, and the hand of the little finger. So uh, when the fist is clenched, the heads of the metacarpals become obvious as the uh, knuckles. So uh, the knuckles, ce sont les jointures, les phalanges et les articulations. Uh, phalanges, the phalanges are the bones of the fingers. Each hand contains 14 phalanges. There are three in each finger, proximal, middle, and distal. Uh, except in the thumb, which has only two proximal and distal. Uh, the thumb, c'est le pouce. Donc, uh, le pouce uh, a deux uh, phalanges, une phalange proximal et une distal. Uh, c'est l'exception. Par rapport aux autres doigts, donc, uh, ils ont trois phalanges, la proximale, la, la médiane et la distale. So uh, this is the posterior view of the hand, the carpals, the metacarpals, and the phalanges. The pelvic girdle and the lower limb. So the pelvis. Uh, the pelvic girdle is also known as uh, hip bones. It's uh, formed with three parts, ilium, ischium, and pubis. Ilium uh, connects posteriorly with the sacrum and the sacroiliac joint, a large layering bone that forms most of the hip bone. Ischium, also known as sit-down bone, so-called because it forms the most anterior part of the coxal bone, and pubis uh, or pubic bone is the most anterior part of the coxal bone. Uh, so this is the pelvic girdle. The, the lower limb, the uh, inferior. Uh, so we have the tie leg and the foot the tie the femur or tie bone is the only bone in the tie it's the largest heaviest and the strongest bone in the body leg connected along its length by anterosseous membrane so we have two bones uh, form the skeleton of the leg we have the the tibia and the fibula. 
The tibia, also known as a shin bone, is larger and more medial at the proximal end. The medial and lateral condyle article with the distal end of the femur to form the knee joint. Knees of the del genou. Fibula, the fibula which lies along the tibia and forms the joints with uh, is both proximally and distally uh, is thin and stick-like. The, the fibula has no part in forming the knee joint. Foot, it supports our body weight and serves as a lever that allows us to propel our bodies forward when we walk and run. So uh, this is the, the lower limb, uh, le membre inférieur. We have the tight, uh, the femur, uh, the, the knee, the genou, uh, the leg with the tibia and the fibula. Et the foot, the pied. Tibia, perronné, uh, le pied, uh, genou et uh, le fémur. The ilium, the ischium and the pubis. The bones of the foot. The foot is composed of three parts, tarsus, metatarsals, and phalanges. The tarsus, forming the posterior half of the foot, is composed of seven tarsal bones. Metatarsals, uh, five metatarsals form the sole. So the sole, c'est la semelle. Et uh, phalanges, uh, 14 phalanges uh, form the toes. Each toe has three phalanges, except uh, the great toe, which has two. So uh, the toes, ce sont les orteils. Chaque orteil a trois phalanges, à l'exception uh, du gros orteil, of the great toe. Uh, il y a two, uh, deux phalanges. So this is the foot, the bones of the foot from above, so, uh, we have the tarsals, voilà. the metatarsals, and the phalanges. Proximal phalanges, uh, the middle phalange, and the distal phalange. The great toe has two phalanges, the proximal one and the distal one. Uh, so uh, we come uh, to the end of our model. Uh, thank you a lot for your attention. Um, I really hope that uh, it will be useful for your career. Thank you a lot. Et donc le cours d'aujourd'hui est terminé. Donc on a parlé euh, de l'anatomie euh, osseuse euh, et euh, à l'aide des, des différentes illustrations. Donc euh, j'espère bien que c'était euh, bien présenté. So we will meet next. Sunday uh, for uh, the second presentation about the human body, equipment and acronyms.